especially to Liko. Happy birthday, Liko. Yeah, happy birthday. We're doing a special uh, video here. Uh, this is going to be a, a practice for hopefully a future series. I used to do this uh, quite frequently. You did? Uh, yes. Uh, that was few, before you met me, though. Yeah, a few years back, I used to do this series on YouTube. Uh, where I would do research for uh, things that happen, uh, birthdays of people on this particular day and uh, things that happen on that particular day. So I guess I gotta ask you, what's the day? Today's December 1st. Yay! It's Liko's 30th birthday. Happy birthday, Liko! He's 30? Liko is 30 years old? Yes. Wow. I'm not even that old. So, uh, so what do you got there? First, I've got a list of, uh, of famous people. Uh, whose birthday is also December 1st. Let me guess. Liko is on the top. Uh, no. He's actually he's not on here. <laughs> Liko's famous! Yes! All right. So, first we're going to start off with a few people who are no longer with us, but are still somebody you may have heard of. We've They're got with us? Mary... There's nobody else but me and you here. Nobody's with us. Mary Martin, who is famous for playing Peter Pan. Uh... She was born in 1913 and died in 1990. She was 77. Aww. And she would have been 107 if she was still alive. That's pretty old. Uh, next is David Doyle, uh, who was no, uh, best known as Bosley on Charlie's Angels. Ah, yes, I remember that one. And as uh, Grandpa Lou Pickles on the Rugrats. I had to walk 15 miles in the snow and uphill both ways. That is, guy. Is that even possible? <laughs> He was born in 1929 and died in 1997 at age 68, and he would have been 91 if he wow. was still alive. Uh, then we have uh, Fujiko F. Fujio, the creator of Doraemon. He's uh, an anime uh, mascot. He's a, this uh, blue earless cat. No wonder I didn't know the uh, name. He was born in 1933 and died in 1996. He would have he was 63 when he died, and he would have been 87 if he was still alive. Uh, next is Lou Rawls. Oh, he was a singer. Yes, he sang, You'll never find another love like mine. Well, we can look. <laughs> he was born in 1933 and died in 2006. Uh, he, would have, he was 73 when he died, and he would have been 87 as well. Uh, let's see. We have one other name uh, coming up who's passed away, but... In between them, we mm -hmm. have uh, Woody Allen, a famous director, uh, best known for the movie Annie Hall. Uh, he is turning 85 today. Wow. Then we have Lee Trevino. He's a golfer who, if you're a fan of The Simpsons, you may remember in the episode uh, Marge Me Not Proud, where Bart uh, stole a copy of Bone Storm. At the end of the episode, Marge gets him the game he, she thinks every kid wants, Lee Trevino's Putting Challenge. I know, that's the game I wanted. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, uh, bite his ball into the parking lot. Would you like to try again? You have selected no. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, was he was weird. born in 1939. He, he was turns 81 today. Oh, so he's still alive. Yes, he's still alive. Maybe we could go get his game and play. <laughs> Uh, next is the last of the people who are no longer with us, Richard Pryor. Oh. He was born in 1940 and died in 2005, and he was 65. One of my favorite movies is, um, the one where he had to spend, uh, $10 million. Ah, Brewster's Millions. Yes. Very good movie. I very, I'd recommend that to anybody who hasn't seen that. Yes. Uh, so well, Star yeah. Crazy was good too. Yes, uh, he dressed up like a bird. He, he's also famously in Superman three. Uh, not that I'd say that was one of his better movies, but he was in it. <laughs> uh, anyway, he would have been eighty if he was still alive. And I bet he'd still be on tour. <laughs> he probably would be. Yep. Uh, so next we have uh, John Densmore, the drummer for The Doors. Uh, Wait a minute! I didn't know The Doors had drummers. Yes, it's a I band. I thought they had doorknobs. It's a band. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, he's, he turned 75 today. As well as Bette Midler, best known as uh, Winifred Sanderson in Hocus Pocus. Amuck, 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 amuck. I hope you guys all saw that this uh, this past Halloween. Did you know that there's actually going to be a sequel? 
Yes, I heard that. Yeah. That's going to be really awesome. She's I, actually going to reprise her yes, role. Yes, all three of them are going to be in it. And she's also 75. Maybe she can get some more serum and uh, get young again. <laughs> All right, next uh, we have uh, Pablo Escobar, famous Colombian drug lord. <laughs> okay, yeah, no he, comment on that one. He, he turned 71 today. Uh, next we have is Deep Roy. Oh, I know him. Yeah? Yeah, he's he played about 10,000 Oompa Loompas. Yes, he was uh, all the Oompa Loompas in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And he's, did you know that he has zero rhythm? He had to practice so hard to do all that. Really? He can't sing, he can't dance, and he had to learn all of it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, he was also in The NeverEnding Story. Yes. And Big Fish. Yep. And a few other different movies. You should look him up. Uh, he's uh, actually uh, been in more things than you might think. Um, so I'm sure everybody knows about the uh, inter internet uh, database there. Yeah, and an it, IMBD movie database. or something yes. like that. And he turned 63 today. I bet he could still loop if he wanted to. <laughs> Uh, then next is Sarah Silverman, uh, best known uh, as Penelope Von Schweetz in Wreck-It Ralph and Wreck-It Ralph 2, Ralph Breaks the Internet. I didn't like the second one as much. Uh, she turns 50 today. Wait, Penelope turned 50? Yeah. Wow. She doesn't look it, does she? No. <laughs> uh, next, uh, we have uh, Philip DeFranco, a YouTube uh, personality. He's known for the Philip DeFranco show. Uh, he turns 35. Then Zoe Kravitz, daughter of Lenny Kravitz. Uh, uh, aren't they the ones that live next door to Samantha? Um, the Kravitz family? I don't think so. Oh, okay. Uh, she was also Lena Lestrange in Fantastic Beasts. And she turns 32 today. Followed by Lico, also known as Clavius. He turns 30. And fa lastly in my list, I have Robert Irwin, son of Steve Irwin. He turns 17 today. And they're running the zoo. Oh, is that right? Yes. They have a zoo in Australia. Oh, wow. So those are all the people I can find that were noteworthy that uh, were born on December 1st. Okay. So if you know anybody else who was born December 1st that is uh, noteworthy, leave it in the comments below. So uh, we can all uh, learn some more. And, and what about, um, uh, now that we've gone through all the people that have birthdays, how about we talk about some special things that happen on December 1st? Yes. All right. So now we're going to be talking about this day in history. And uh, I I went to go through a really huge list and narrowed it down, tried to get to as many that were uh, is the most interesting. And hopefully you guys will all think it's interesting, too. I, I have something important that happened today. What's that? Sokonko started up his um, Important Days of History stream again. <laughs> yes. Yes, I suppose that did happen today. Yes. But that's uh, 2020. We got to go through a, a lot of years before we get to there. So I think somebody's at the door. Um, well, oh, they can wait. Yeah. I think it's the pizza. It, maybe Stagehand can get, can get the door. All right, that's fine. Get the stage door! I mean, get the uh, door stagehand. <laughs> okay. Goes. So, uh, first we're starting in 1824. Um, I don't know anything about that year. The U.S. House of Representatives began to decide the outcome of the election deadlock between John Quincy Adams and Andrew Jackson. Gee, that sounds familiar. Yeah, huh? <laughs> kind of weird. We History is repeating itself. Here we are in 2020, yes. Uh, well, Adams won that one. So, just, just uh, spoilers for history there. Uh, next, we have 1887. Uh, Sherlock Holmes' first appearance in print in The Study in Scarlet by Arthur Conan Doyle. Isn't he the one that had that sidekick with a watch or something? You know, watched in? Uh, it's, it's Watson. Oh, Watson. Okay. Watson, come here. I Sorry. need you. Oh, oh wait. Uh, that's the wrong Watson. And, and he <laughs> uh, he smoked a pipe, too, didn't he? I think so, yeah. Yes. A Meerschaum pipe, to mm -hmm. be specific. All right, so next we have uh, in 1903, we're finally in the 1900s, 1903, The Great Train Robbery. Ooh. The first Western film released. So, yeah. Was, that it, was it a silent movie? Um, it, uh, it didn't say on the list I, here. I'm not sure. I would sure. say probably it, it might have been. that early. It was probably a silent film. All right. Uh, then 1912, the Boston Braves uh, MLB franchise owner James Gaffney buys the uh, Alston Golf Club on Commonwealth Avenue uh, in Boston with a plan to construct a ballpark there. Groundbreaking for the Braves field started on March 20th in 1915, a few years later. And do you know who they turned into? 
Who did they turn into? They turned into the Boston Red Sox. Really? Yes. Oh my goodness. No wonder why. Okay, awesome. I did not know that. I'm All not right. a big sports fan, but uh, being here in Massachusetts, we kind of need to know those things. All right. Well, I'm, I'm already learning stuff. Yes. All right. Uh, next, in 1913, we got a couple of things. Ford Motor Company uh, institutes the world's first moving assembly line for the Model T. Wow. Uh, as well as the first drive-up gasoline station opens in Pittsburgh. And, you know, back then, they used to have five or six people that would come out and help mm -hmm. assist with your car. They would clean the windows, and they would fill up the tires, and they would check your oil, mm -hmm. and they would give you gas. And they would probably even vacuum your car if you asked them. Uh, did, did they have vacuums in 1930? Oh, I don't know. They used a straw. I couldn't <laughs> tell you. And nowadays, you got to pump your own gas. Mm -hmm. And the people at the window are usually pretty rude. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, if you ever watch Back to the Future, uh, when he goes back to 1955, we kind of see something like that at the Texaco. Born so I know exactly what you mean. In Tennessee. They were singing that song in that movie. Okay. All right, so next we have 1919, Lady Nancy Astor sworn in as the first female member of the British Parliament. Ooh. I'm guessing there were more after her. Yeah. <laughs> but she was the very first woman to ever be in the, the British Parliament. That was a big landmark. All right, then in 1921, the U.S. Post Office establishes a philatelic agency, which means uh, stamp collecting. So they started stamp collecting in uh, in uh, 1921. I tried collecting stamps once. You did? Yeah, and I got covered with them. I wasn't very happy. Uh oh, I they stuck think, all over me. I don't think you're supposed to put them on yourself. I think you're supposed to either put them in a book or keep them in a, an envelope or something. I wish somebody would have told me that. Uh -huh. They got stuck all over my face and all over my. And, and back then, you had to lick the stamps. Yeah, they, now they're self adhesive yes. these days. But yeah, uh, so that was. Uh, 1919, so that was 99 years ago. Wow. So, uh, actually, no, 101 years ago. I wonder right? if people still collect stamps these days. No, 2020, 1921. So, yeah, it was 99 years ago. I would say. Do you think people still collect stamps? Uh, I'm pretty sure they do. Uh, there's some that are really valuable. Okay. I know there's uh, famous, uh, the inverted Jenny. Oh, is that a, the upside down airplane? Yes, that's the upside down airplane. Yes. Exactly. That's probably one of the most uh, famous, uh, expensive uh, postage stamps out there. I had two of those. You did? Yeah, I put them on a postcard and mailed it to my uncle. Um, are you sure you're not confusing yourself with uh, Richard Pryor again? Oh, shucks, you guessed it. <laughs> he actually bought the stamp and mailed it, yes. All right, uh, so next, um, where are we? So 1924, uh, the Boston Bruins beat fellow expansion Montreal Maroons 2-1 to one at the Boston Arena. The first NHL game to be played in the United States. Wow. And did you know that same night, it was the very first night of extreme pain and suffering at Mass General Hospital from all the fights? What? Yeah. They, well, they had a hockey game. Yeah. And that's all they do in the hockey games is fight. Uh. So after the game was over, they went to Mass General Hospital, and they had the biggest night at the hospital ever. Okay, uh, no, I suppose kidding. that's possible. No, 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 no. I mean, they, they only scored three points total. Three. <laughs> yeah. Two. They won two to one. It was not a very high-scoring game. I don't know no. if hockey gets that high a score, but, um, yeah, that didn't sound very good. I guess that was probably before the Boston Garden, too. Yeah, Which I guess is it would have been. Um, a whole new building. Yeah. All right, uh, let's see. Next, we have in 1928, uh, National League President John uh, Hadler first proposes to a bask baseball rule change called for a tenth man, known as a designated hitter, uh, to bat in place of the pitcher. Ironically, the National League vote in favor of the proposal, but the American League turned it down. Oh, oh, excuse me, one second. <coughs> a dry throat. Uh, so why did they turn it down, do we know? I have no idea. If you uh, if you want to find out, you can uh, look it up yourself and leave it in the comments below. But for now, we're going to move on. Uh, 1929, the game of bingo was invented. Uh, and it was invented by Edwin S. Lowe. Have you ever played bingo? I used to play bingo. Yes, I loved it. 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure everybody's played bingo at some point in their lives. Uh, Sakonko. Yeah? Stagehand is trying to get our attention again. Oh, what's he trying to say? The pizza's ready. Oh. <laughs> I'm, stagehand will be there after we do the video. You should have shut that off. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's okay. So, so, so what were we talking about? We were talking about what? So, 91 years ago, the game of bingo oh, was bingo, his name. Oh, bingo, yes. And bingo was his name of. B3. Oh, wait, uh... You sunk my battleship. I-17. Wait, wait wrong, wrong game. <laughs> O-69. There you go. Yes. Hey, I, I like that one. I thought you would. <laughs> All right, in 1952, the New York Daily News reports that the first successful sexual reassignment operation. So there A you go. sexual reassignment operation. Yeah. All the way back then? Yeah, you wouldn't think so. Wow. You'd think that was more recent, right? I would. I'm so happy that people are getting to be who they need to be. Yeah. Yes. They also... You know, I wanted to be an alligator. Oh, you did? Yeah. But I couldn't get the skin for it. Oh. Sorry about so that. So I'm happy with the rabbit for now. All right. Yes. So a year later, in 1953, Hugh Hefner published the first edition of Playboy magazine. <gasps> featuring Marilyn Monroe as the centerfold. <coughs> Excuse me. Goodbye, Norma Jean. No, I never knew you at all. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. That's all right. You know that was her real name, right? I think so, yes. yeah. I'm pretty sure there was an episode of A Quantum Leap where we find that out. Yes. All right, so so that was then. Uh, so 1955, this one you probably all heard of, or at least I hope you have. Uh, Rosa Parks is arrested for refusing to move to the back of the bus and give her seat to a white passenger in Montgomery, Alabama. Good for her. The uh, the Montgomery bus boycott started there and started a whole civil rights movement. And it's uh, definitely one of those really famous points in history that a lot of people know about. Yes. But I don't know if uh, a lot of everybody knows uh, that it happened on December first because mm -hmm. I didn't until I looked these up. All lives matter. Yes. Especially bunnies. Yes. BLM. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, so next we have 1959. The first color photograph of Earth is received from outer space. Ooh. So that, I don't know if it's the blue marble picture, but we, oh, uh, we, we didn't have any color pictures of what the Earth looked like from space until uh, 1959. I so bet that's it was kind all of green crazy. and blue. Uh, mostly blue. Uh, it's actually not as green as you'd think uh, from outer space. All right, so next we have... I wonder 19... how high they were. Ni <laughs> I can't um, see. I forget how high uh, it is uh, to the out outer atmosphere, but uh, yeah. I can't see through the ceiling. Yeah, we, the ceiling is kind of getting in the way. Uh, so then in 1971, John Lennon and Yoko Ono released Happy Xmas, War is Over in the U.S. That was on December 1st? Yeah. I thought it would be on December 9, 9, um, 9, 9, uh, 9. There is no December 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9. Huh? There is no December 9, 9, 9, 9, 9. It only, there's only a December 9th. There's no December 99. You don't get that, do you? Um, Number 9, number 9. <laughs> okay, now you got it. Yeah, I got it. You're going to get it. <laughs> Later. Oh, jeez. Uh, so next we have 1973. Jack Nicholas finishes at 13 under par at 275 to win the Walt Disney World Open by one stroke from Mason Rudolph and becomes the first player to reach $2 million in PGA career tour earnings. Did you ever dance with a golf club in the pale moonlight? Um, I think you're getting mixed up with Jack Nicholson. son. Oh, I keep forgetting those two. Yes, okay. This is Jack Nicholas. And N I C K L A U S. Nicholas. N I C K. No, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, that, I mean it. What it was the uh, Walt B Disney World Open, but not. N Y. Um. <laughs> All right. So next we have 1974. American Jacqueline Hansen runs female world record marathon of two hours, 43 minutes, 54.5 seconds. In Culver City, California. Does it say how far she ran? Uh, I'm not sure. It must have been a marathon they had in California. Okay. But uh, she was the first. Uh, she. She was the first to come in that quickly. Yeah. Okay. 
Then in 1976, the Sex Pistols, using profanity on TV, uh, were branded as rotten punks. So I think well, that's where punk music uh, was uh, was named. I don't know. Unless you're on a uh, cable TV station, I have to go with I'm not too thrilled with um, swearing and dirty words on regular TV. Yeah. Although I do like um, certain movies. Let's see. Um, let's see. There's the uh, Happy Time Murders. <laughs> yeah, that's um, a really good movie. We yeah, should. I, I know a couple that. of those actors. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Did what? you know that Kevin Clash was in that too? Really? He helped one of my friends with a voice. Oh. And if you don't know who Kevin Clash is, look it up. What? Am I tickling you? <laughs> See, uh, that's, I don't love you anymore. That's a hint to you guys there. Uh -huh. All right, so uh, next, uh, let's see, where were we? Uh, next, in 1978, the U.S. performed a nuclear test in Nevada test site. 1978? Yeah. I must have been those aliens they have in Roswell. Uh, I'm not sure. It doesn't say. Okay. I, don't th I don't think that was the case. I think that was a lot. I think that was before then. Well, maybe it was on the strip then if it was in Nevada. Probably, Anything probably not. What, what happens in <laughs> Vegas stays in Vegas. Yes, yes that's true. Uh, then we have in 1982, dentist Barney B. Clark gets the first artificial heart. A dentist? Yeah, a dentist. Got a heart? Yeah. I could while away the hours confirming... I'm sorry, that's the wrong movie. <laughs> that's the... <laughs> if I only had a heart. No, that was a brain, wasn't it? No, the Tin Man wanted a heart. Oh, okay, that, that's right. Watch the movie! <laughs> it's been a while. I thought you were doing the Scarecrow. You, you kind of remind me of the Scarecrow more than you remind Actually, me of the Tin Man. I, I think I was doing the Scarecrow song, but okay. the heart. All right, uh, so then, let's see. In 1982, also in 1982, Tootsie, directed by Sidney Pollack and starring Dustin Hoffman, uh, premiered in Hollywood. No comment. No comment? No comment. Well, Tootsie's, it was a good movie. Tootsie's a really good movie. And it was the first movie, well, not one of the first. It, it was all about cross-dressing and mm -hmm. trying to get what you need uh, by doing what you have to do. And it's uh, kind of uh, what may have inspired uh, Mrs. Doubtfire. So if you've never seen Tootsie but you've seen Mrs. Doubtfire, it's a similar premise to that where a guy is uh, unable to uh, get a job doing something. So he ends up uh, coming up with a new persona and becoming a woman. And if you really want to go back, go back to the uh, early 80s and look up the TV show Bosom Buddies. <laughs> it was one of Tom Hanks' first gigs, and I think he was wonderful in it. And was that before 1982? Yeah. I don't remember when it was. All right, well, Tootsie was 1982. Okay. Uh, 1984, Beverly Hills Cop, directed by Martin Brett, and starring Eddie Murphy <laughs> and Judge <laughs> Reinhold, premiered in Los Angeles. <laughs> Yay, Axel F. Yeah, that's the good that song that was you know, made I, famous by that movie. Yes, I really like the third version of that movie. All right, we'll have to watch that at some point. Yes, we will. Uh, next, we have 1986. Hey, that was the year I was born. Paul McCartney releases Only Love Remains. I'm not going to say a word. Okay. Things are running around in my head. <laughs> There's a certain bird that keeps yelling something about Paul McCartney. And um, let's just say that he's omnipresent. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the bird, not Paul. Uh, we sure? Yes. Paul's not omnipresent too? No. Okay. Uh, kind of like a certain rat. Ah, okay. So next we have uh, 1988, the first World AIDS Day to raise awareness of the AIDS global epidemic. Happened. And that's always a good thing to raise awareness mm -hmm. of that. I mean, now nowadays... Uh, there's a certain other uh, disease going around that uh, everybody's trying to be be more careful about. So, which will come up later. Yeah, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, then 1996, Wayne Gretzky becomes first and only player in NHL history to reach 3,000 points. Wow. Plot. Uh, so yeah, he he's uh, it's no wonder he's called the greatest. And do you know what sport he played? Hockey. Very good. 
And then in 1997, Howard Stern Radio Show premiered in Davenport, Iowa on KORB 93.5 FM. What was in that letters? Uh, it's KORB 93 FM. KORB. Sorry. <laughs> so yeah, if you all heard of Howard Stern, that's when he got his start. He was on America's Got Talent for a while. Yeah, he was. Also in that year, Westinghouse formally changed his name to CBS. That's because they didn't want refrigerators being on TV anymore. Is that right? Well, Westinghouse used to make TVs. Okay. And refrigerators. All right. Cool. All right. Next, we have in 1998, Exxon announced a $73.7 billion deal to buy mobile, creating Exxon Mobil, the world's largest company. I'm not sure if it's still the world's largest company now, but it was at the time. And uh, we all he probably heard of uh, the Exxon Valdez uh, accident that happened the, uh, as well. So if you've not heard of them, then that's where they're from. I don't know. I think there's a certain company that begins with the letter D that's D. probably bigger than them now. Yeah, that, that might be the world's biggest company these days. Uh, they, they kind of... Have, I've uh, been acquiring everything now. <laughs> I own it, it owns me, and it's gonna be. <laughs> All right, uh, moving on. In 2003, we're fi finally getting into this uh, this century here. Uh, the Return of the King, the third and final film in the Lord of the Rings series. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Directed by Peter Jackson, starring Elijah Wood and Ian McKellen. Premiered in Wellington, New Zealand, Wait where they filmed it in New Zealand. You said The Return of the King. Yeah, the third Lord of the Rings movie. I thought the king was Elvis. Oh, yeah, no, Thank not, you. not Thank him. You very much. <laughs> oh, Aragorn. Oh, blue Christmas. Well, it's December 1st, so I could sing that, right? Uh, yeah, you, yeah. You, that's, that's true. But, but I guess it doesn't matter because it's Lord of the Rings. Yes. And the next one we have is in 2014. The Hobbit Battle of the Five Armies premiered. Third and final Hobbit film, also directed by Peter Jackson, uh, starring Martin Freeman and Ian McKellen, premiered in London. So yeah, uh, between 2003 and 2014, nine years, right? I think, yeah. No, no, 11 years, 11. I always get that. <laughs> 11 years. Between... It was a couple of years in between. Yeah. yeah. So just, the, it's kind of funny that both trilogies ended on the exact same day of the year. Of course. I'm wondering if they planned it that way or if it just happened to work out. Uh, so then we have, in 2015, uh, the largest deal ever for a Major League Baseball pitcher, the Boston Red Sox land one of the biggest catches of the offseason, signing a free agent David Price for seven years and $217 million. Wouldn't you like to have that kind of cash, huh? How come we can't get jobs like that? I know, right? Well, I guess it's uh, kind of because he was very talented that he got that kind of money. Well, I, I heard that uh, David Ortiz was a bigger star, though. Yeah, but it didn't happen on December 1st, so... Oh, this is true. Yes, okay. I'll give you that. So then we have, in 2017, only a few years ago, President Trump's former National Security Advisor, Michael Flynn, pleads guilty to lying to the FBI. <gasps> You mean that somebody in President Trump's group lied? That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> all right, then we have uh, two years ago, 2018, Ariana Grande released the music video to her single, Thank You, Next, the biggest ever launch on a YouTube premiere. Thank You, Next. Yeah, we, you is spelled just the letter U. Oh. Uh, also in 2018, the world's first super high definition 8K television channel by Japanese broadcaster NHK launched. So oh, yeah, did you get one of those for Christmas. Uh, uh, a an television H station? Yeah, no, uh, uh, an 8D, uh, whatever it is, TV set. Oh, uh, an 8K television. Yeah, I want one that um, I can look into and actually see the picture and uh. pretend it's real. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I know we have an HDTV here, but yeah. uh, I want one that looks so real, it will look like you and I are sitting in their living room since they're watching us right now. Hmm. Can well, you maybe imagine someday. the two of us sitting in your living room? And uh, the last few ones we have here, 
Also in 2018, computer animated film Spider-Man Enter the Spider-Verse premiered in Los Angeles, and it went on to win the Academy Award for Best Animated Film in 2019. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, mm -hmm. does whatever a spider can. Then we have the last year, 2019, 2019. a newly developed Apple that can last a year called the Cosmic Crisp goes on sale in Washington State. Oh, shucks. I just ate one. Well, it didn't last a year. <laughs> was it good? It was delicious. Awesome. I'm going to have to try one of those someday. Now, if they could just get carrots to last a year, it would be good. Yeah. that. <laughs> yes. Or and, bamboo. Yeah, bamboo. What, that would be good. I love, my, I love bamboo. I know, but, you know, after a couple of weeks, it gets kind of weird. Well, our final... Our final thing here. Our final thing for the day. In, also in 2019, the earliest traceable patient, a 55-year-old man, developed symptoms of a novel coronavirus called COVID-19 in Wuhan, China. So would you believe that this whole thing started a year ago today? Or at least the earliest known case that we know of happened a year ago today. I just want it to be over. I know. Me too. Me too. But, yeah, we we kind of didn't start shutting everything down until, what, mid-March of, uh, of this year? I think that was it, yeah, March, so, April, somewhere in there. So December, January, January, February, February, March, three and a half months. We first discovered this thing three and a half months ago, uh, or three and a half months before everything was uh, yes. shut down. and Before it started getting bad. Yeah, well, maybe if we had uh, gotten on top of this sooner... We wouldn't have had to. We wouldn't still be stuck in all this uh, the, by now. I don't know. All I want to do is give people hugs again. You know, it's been that long. Oh, thank you. And hugs, you, to, hugs you, to you too, yes. Liko. You and I live together, so you know mm -hmm. we're in our own little uh, bubble here. Yes. Well, speaking of which, where's your buddy Muscle Lion tonight? Um, I not sure. I'm sure he's around somewhere. Well, he's probably decorating for Christmas. Ah, yeah. Well, that's... He likes Christmas. Yeah, he loves Christmas. Yes. All right. Well, uh, this has gone on a lot longer than I thought it would be. But I hope you guys all had enjoyed our little video. And if you do, I'm hoping to try to bring this in starting in January as a semi-regular thing. Uh, I've done uh, about 40 or 50 uh, different lists like these uh for a, another channel that um, if I end up doing any doing these, I may just uh, take those and redo them here. I think uh, the next pizza's here. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, hope you th hope you liked watching, and uh, if you did, uh, let us know. Give yes. us a like, a comment, to let us uh, know if the, you uh, want to see more like this. The pizza guy's ringing the doorbell really hard. All right, so I think it's time to go. It's time to go. All right, bye everybody, and bye. happy birthday, Rico! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy December 1st. Yes, December 1st. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.